Are you curious what's going on with the local San Jose real estate market? Well, it is the springtime and things are heating up, so stay tuned so we can go into the data. Hi, I'm Teresa Wellman with homeownerexperience.com, your local San Jose, California realtor. I help my clients experience the difference by setting up a strategic plan to get to the one home to the next. So today we're gonna to talk about the local market and actual real data. And I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail about supply and demand and how that fuels the market. So jump into the computer with me to look at the charts. So if you watched last month's video, you saw that I pulled this up for historical purposes, mostly for this yellow line or of inventory. If you look at the very bottom, I put a yellow dotted line to give you a feel for where inventory is today compared to the last 21 years. As you can see, very low. Very rare occasions have we been this low and definitely not typical for this time of year. So have you heard a lot of news about doom and gloom and the market's gonna crash and all these different things? Well, I wanna go in a little bit more into detail on the data this month to educate you so that you look at all the data, not just one statistic that maybe the news is trying to pull out and make something out of, and also that you consider very local Silicon Valley, Santa Clara County market data rather than national statistics. So all markets regarding real estate are driven by supply and demand. Um, pretty much most markets in uh, the way an, a free market is supply and demand. So when the supply is low and the demand is high, what happens? Hmm, prices rise, right? Because everyone's fighting. Think about at the very beginning of COVID-19, the cost of a mask that was an N95 mask went really high because the demand was extremely high and there was very low supply. Same happens for real estate. So again, going back to that yellow line, our inventory or our supply, we have a low supply, but pretty good demand. So let's go into the numbers and talk about how this is fueling our market and how I don't see doom and gloom coming, but rather very strong market factors driving this market. So here's a local San Jose chart all the way back to 2012, to kind of zooms in to give you a feel again about uh, the market and the statistics and the inventory. So in the field, I'm still seeing multiple offers, still seeing property selling way over. That's, again, demand. We also have low inventory. If you look again at that yellow line, our supply is low. So looking forward, we're going to continue to have a strong market because our supply and demand imbalance is so opposite right now that um, the market can't change directions. It may soften, and that may happen, but we're not seeing indications of that yet. So here's the actual stats. March 2021, uh, the average price closed 11% higher compared to actually the year before as well as the month before. So there was a little um, sl slowdown in the off season of the fall and winter. That's typical. We've had a very sharp increase in prices and that has uh, shown that difference of 11% from February to March. The number of sales are up really high, which is pretty seasonal. If you look, it's 37% up from last month, but last year it's 39% up. So um, it's even stronger than last year, but last year was March. Might've had a tiny impact on the closings because we shut down for COVID-19 on March 17th, 2020. Um, but things that were in contract probably likely closed through the end of March. Maybe a few didn't, but I would say most did. I think the biggest impact we're going to see is actually in the April market and the May market when we look at year over year comparisons. So here's some key takeaways for March 2021, right? We've got a very low days of inventory, only 16 days of supply. That's extremely low historically. And nationally, that's just unheard of. If you've lived anywhere else besides San Jose, you know that in, houses sit on the market for a while um, and it inventory can be months, not days. And here we are at 16 days. Pending sales are up really strong, so the demand continues to be very strong. Um, while inventory at the same time was down slightly, which at this time of year, it should be really up. So our supply is continuing to be an issue. And the percent of inventory in contract increased. If you look at that, we have 73% of single family homes are in contract. Uh, wow, that means 73% of the ones that are up for sale are already in contract. That is an extremely high number. Last month, it was 66%. Again, showing the demand is strong and actually increasing, not doing the opposite. And 
So that is a really strong indicator. And the last one would be the sales price to list price ratio. If you look at that on average, 110.6% over the asking price. Hmm, do you think we have a supply and demand problem when people are willing to pay 10% over the asking price just to get the house? Yes, we do. So until those numbers start to soften or change direction, the market will not change directions. So factors that can change the direction are going to be inter increasing interest rates because that'll affect the affordability and therefore affect the demand or how much people can afford. If the economy were to be shut down again, that can affect the demand. And a lot more inventory could also affect the supply and change, uh, soften things. Or a big change in the stock market can also affect the demand because people won't have as big of an uh, income to make a down payment, um, or they might be a little bit scared and they're gonna pull out. So looking at the yellow circles here, I'm just gonna highlight the green lines are the sales, uh, closed sales for the month. And if you look at 2021, these early months, we've had really strong sales. If you go back, the circle is drawn in the exact same spot every year. If you go back and look, we have way more green in this circle in 2021. That's just saying the sales are really up. And on top of that, the inventory, this yellow line is really down. So feeling such the strong market and all of this overbidding. Now, interest rates did increase a tiny bit, but tiny bit. Again, thinking perspective, we are very historically low and economists are saying maybe 3.5% by the end of the year. So still gonna be extremely affordable and at record levels throughout the entire year. The stock market is not showing any signs of changing direction. It is continuing to increase. And here's our chart where we compare the Santa Clara County home prices versus the S&P 500. And those yellow circles are where I highlight the differences or when they go different directions. Uh, that did happen a little bit when the housing prices softened in the fall. And though it has continued, the housing prices have caught up with the stock market and have continued to increase at a very sharp rate. Unemployment is holding a, a scattering up and down and around the 5%. If that were to drastically change, that could change things a little bit. But again, not horrible, could be better, of course. Uh, but with these current market factors, um, you know, this obviously isn't having too big an effect on the buyers who are buying. And now let's just take a quick look at the condos. Countywide, there's a 25, 29 day supply. So a little bit more than what you're seeing in a single family market. Sales are up 23%, so the demand is increasing. The market is pretty strong, uh, but inventory will also increase 14%. So they're only seeing 102.9% of asking as opposed to the 110% that you see in single family homes. So supply versus demand is still indicating a seller's market, but the imbalance is not quite as sharp as in the single family home. So if you're in that million dollar, $900,000 price point, I highly suggest you consider townhomes. It won't be quite as competitive and exhausting to search for your home. All right, so next, let's talk about um, if you're interested how what's the difference between a buyer's market and a seller's market and how to tell the difference watch that video I put up there on the screen or if you're looking to buy make sure you prepare and start with my home buyer checklist video thanks for watching